Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Busari Moliayo and I am a registered nurse. On this channel, I film about nursing and healthcare. So if you're interested in content like that, do click on subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you get a notification whenever I drop another video. With that being said, let's get into today's topic. Today's video is actually going to be very, very short and precise because I'm basically just going to be discussing medications used in pain management. But I already have a video where I talked about pain, pain assessments, and the different forms of pain. I'm going to link it up here in case you want to watch that video before coming back because this is just like a concluding part of that video. So there are two major um, classes of medications that are used in the management of pain. And it's important that as a nurse, you understand or know which class any medication falls into because there are different um, dangers associated with the use of some of these pain medications that you would want to avoid for your patients. So the first one are the opioid analgesics, while the second one are the non-opioid analgesics. For the opioid analgesic, they have a very high chance to cause sedation and they can also make the heart rate and respiratory, um, did I say respiratory system? Yeah, they can slow down circulatory and respiratory system and they can also have CNS depression. And there's also a very, 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 very high risk of addiction with opioid analgesic. So these medications are used with care and sometimes they are even classified under the DDA drugs. So you can't administer them without having another nurse to countersign or to witness your administration of these um, analgesics. Some examples are codeine, oxycodone, as well as pentasocin. These are some of the common examples of opioids that you will be using in the hospital. The second class of medications are the pain medications that are not opioids. That's why they are called non-opioids, which means that they don't have the tendency for sedation, slowing down the heart, or causing CNS depression. And there are two major classes under this. You have non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs to fall under this class, as well as your acetaminophen, which is your paracetamol. A very common characteristic of medications that fall under non-opioids is that most of the time they also have an anti-inflammatory and antipyretic effect, which means that if the temperature is very high, they can bring down the body temperature. A very good example is acetaminophen, which is your paracetamol. While you also have anti-inflammatory um, characteristics with the NSAIDs, the NSAID non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Examples of the NSAIDs include your diclofenac, uh, your ibuprofen as well. These are very, very common examples of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs as well as indomethacin. Yeah, indomie, <laughs> indomethacin. So these are common examples of non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs that have antibiotics, anti-inflammatory effects, aside your yeah, pain relief effect. So what I'll advise is that you go ahead to read more about these pain medications, especially the opioids, and know how to identify, like know their names, so that you don't give opioid analgesics that might cause addiction sporadically or randomly. And if you want to see more of my videos related to pharmacology, click this link, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!